Okay, let's get down to the business of building a program that has some animation in it. One of the first things we need to talk about is the things on the screen that are going to be moving around, like the soccer ball and the soccer shoe. A term that's been around in game development since the early 1970s, uh, the word sprite is used in a lot of game development to refer to pictures on the screen that are going to be able to move around. So we might say the soccer ball is a sprite because it goes moving around the screen and it does so on its own. But the shoe that the player moves by touching the keys on the keyboard is also a sprite again because it's a picture that goes moving around the screen right now let's think about what we need the information we need to store about a sprite in order to create an image that can move around the screen in java fx so we're going to make a new class here and we're going to call it sprite now, of course, one of the first things that we're going to need to store about a sprite is the image that the sprite has. And we're going to make all these things private. So we're going to need to store the image, and that's a JavaFX image um, item. And in order to display that image on the screen, we also need an image view, and we're going to make that part of the class as well. So let's just call that image view an image view object. Now, that's not quite enough. I know the image and the image view have, you know, some stuff built into them to say where the object is located, but we want to make life a little bit easier on ourselves and maintain that information directly within the sprite class. So remember when we put a, a picture on to um, our window, we measure where that picture is by telling the uh, X coordinate of the left side of the picture and the Y coordinate of the top of the picture. So we give the coordinates of the top left corner of the image. We need to store those two numbers. And typically we store those as a double. So we're going to store the X location. Uh, let's call it position X as a double. And we're going to store the Y location. Let's call it position y as a double. But a sprite isn't just a static picture. We don't just place it on the screen and then forget about it forever. A sprite is a picture that moves around. And so we also need to store well, how fast is this particular picture moving and kind of in what direction. So we need not only a position in the x and y, but we need a speed or I'm going to call it velocity in the x direction. So speed horizontally, and we need a velocity in the y direction. Mistake there. That way we can tell what direction the sprite moves as it runs around. Okay, and one last thing that we're going to need to make use of throughout uh, programming with the sprites is how big is the actual picture. So if I was to, uh, for example, just show a border around this, okay, there we go. there's a border around that sprite and a border around this sprite. Now, when I was, if I was working in the actual program, I would probably want the border to be as tight to the soccer ball as possible. But uh, just for now, for an example, I want to be able to say how large is the picture here that I'm dealing with? What are the boundaries of it? So we're also going to store a width as a double and a height as a double. And I'll say a little bit about why we need to store that in a second. In terms of methods that we need to work with, well, we're going to need of course, we're going to need a constructor method just to make a new sprite. And I would say that the information that we're going to have to receive as part of that constructor method is what picture do you want on the sprite? And for that matter, I would also like to have a method that allows me to change the picture that's, saved, that's displayed there 
if I want to. Um, in terms of what other methods will a sprite class need to offer, of course, I'm going to need to have a get and set method for every single one of the uh, different attributes, the positions, the velocities, the width and the height, because I might want to be able to check those. Actually, I don't think I want a set method for the width and height. Those are kind of defined by the picture. They don't change over time. But I would like to be able to um, change especially the velocity, and I'd like to be able to change the position if and when I need to for my the game that I'm creating. But I also want to provide the ability to have this soccer ball move kind of on its own, right? So I want to be able to say, okay, it's been, for example, a quarter second. Where should the new position for the soccer ball be? So it was here after a quarter second, it should be here. After another quarter second, it should be here. After another quarter second here. After another quarter second here. After another quarter second there. And that's how I'm creating the animation, right? So an important um, extra method of the sprite class is I'd like to be able to say update the sprite after a given amount of time. And we'll take that time as a double because I might say it's been, you know, like I said, a quarter second, not a full second. In fact, I'm hoping for like a hundredth of a second would be very nice. I'm not going to list getter and setter methods for all of the different um, attributes because I don't have enough space really i'm just going to list some of the important uh, methods for the sprite class and then we'll add the other ones in as we're coding it something else that i need to be able to do with a sprite is to look at two different sprites right this game the ball is supposed to bounce off the shoe and in order to make that happen I need to know if these two images start touching each other, right? That's one of the reasons why I want the boundary to be as tightly cropped to the shoe as I possibly can so that it doesn't look like we're touching already, even though we're not clearly not touching yet. Um, but in my sprite class, I'd like to be able to have something that tells me, am I touching another sprite? So I need two methods for that. One is a method to tell me, well, what's the boundaries of the soccer ball? What's the boundary of the soccer ball? And what's the boundary of the uh, shoe? And then I need a method that says, are those two boundaries overlapped with each other? Right. So I'm going to add a method here, get boundary. And get boundary is going to return a rectangle. I haven't said what these other things return. This one is a void. This one is a void. And I would also like to have a method called intersects that takes as an argument some other sprite so that I can say in an if statement, does the soccer ball intersect with the foot? And that's going to have a boolean as the type that it returns because I want the answer to be yes or no. Does this intersect or does this not intersect? All right, so there's a little bit incomplete, but a set of methods that I need to provide from the sprite class in order to uh, get the objects that are going to move around on the screen to be moving around the way I want them to with the animation timer in this program. So let's get to coding that up. OK, so here we are in Eclipse, and I've started my Soccer Keep Ups project. And I want to build my sprite class, and I want to build this one with you guys just right from the get-go. So I'm going, here's a new class, and I'm going to call it Sprite. And I'm going to put it in the package Baumeister. And I don't need a public void main for the sprite, and I don't really need constructors from a super class. So I'm just going to hit finish, and that'll make me the basic class file. 
Now, something that I didn't mention while we were building the UML diagram is that this class sprite, I'm going to use the group class from JavaFX um, as the base for the class. I'm going to extend the group. That way I can put the picture on the screen if I want to, but I can also add other things onto the screen for uh, debugging purposes if I wanted to, um, like maybe an arrow in the direction that the that the sprite is heading or a box around the sprite to show where its boundaries are. Uh, those would only be for debugging purposes, but uh, I can add them if I base the sprite off of a group instead of basing it off of uh, the image or just making it its own class. So I need to, of course, import that. And we talked about the, uh, well, the attributes that the uh, sprite package needs to have in it. So we're going to have a private image and we're just going to name that sprites image. And I don't know what the image is yet because I remember it could be the soccer ball or the shoe. So I'm not going <clears> to <throat> create the object for the image. Just declare it. Uh, I need an image view to show that image within the group. Um, this one I can say I'm creating a new image view. Normally I would do that based off of some picture, but I don't have the picture yet. So I'm just making a new uh, object and I'll put the picture into it later. And I need some doubles. The position in the X direction and the position in the Y direction, which I'm going to start them off at zero because I don't know where the ball is, but I'm going to make methods to be able to change that within my main game. And I needed a double for the speed or the velocity in the X direction, which again, I'll start that off at zero, but I'll have methods to change it. And I'm going to have a private velocity in the Y direction, starting at zero. And I need a width which until I know the picture that I'm using, I don't know what that is. I'll start at a zero and a height. All right, so there's all the attributes of the Sprite class or a basic set of attributes for the Sprite class. If you were to um, create a more complex game, you might choose to add more attributes to a Sprite class. Like for example, something like the health of a character could be a variable in the Sprite class. we need to create the constructor that sets all of the values of these attributes uh, when the sprite is created. So it's public sprite. And of course, in order to make a sprite, I'm going to need to know what image you want to be displayed on the screen. So that's going to be the argument for the constructor. I can do everything else, but I can't make the sprite unless you give me the picture to work with. Right, so I need to save the picture that we're going to work with. So the attribute image is going to be um, set equal to whichever picture you just passed me. And now that you've given me the picture, I can know how big the picture is. I can find out the width from the image. Uh, it'd be I get width picture that you gave me, and I can tell me the, tell the height from the height of the picture that you gave me. And I can create or put the picture into my image view. Uh, set the image to the picture that you gave me. And remember, this is based off of a group. Uh, so in order to have the image be displayed when I have the group on a window somewhere in my main program, I need to add the image view into the group. Uh, the way I do that is to say for this particular object, this group that I have, I want to get the children of the group and add the image view. Once that's done, the sprite is kind of set and ready. Notice that it's still going to have position 0, 0 and velocity 0, 0. So it would be in the top left-hand corner of the screen if I made it with this constructor. Uh, but that's okay. Like I said, we're going to have methods to change that. Uh, 
something that a person might want to do is be able to change the image and what would happen if they wanted to change the image well i would have to have a public void call it set image sort of consistent with the language in javafx and you'd have to tell me the new image that you want displayed by the sprite well if you tell me a new image then i'm going to basically need to do all these same things that i did in the constructor i'm going to need to store the new picture i'm going to need to change the width and the height to match the new picture and i'm going to need to put the new picture into the image view i don't have to re-add the image view into the the group because it's already there so i just need to do that okay now let's think about having methods to change the x and the y location the velocity in the x and y directions and the width and the height and i say all those in one big uh, group together because eclipse provides a really nice easy way to add all of those getter and setter methods all at once without me having to actually code them if you look in the menu source and look for generate getters and setters so and i'm making a new class i can use this ability built into eclipse to write a whole bunch of methods for me generate getters and setters which attributes do i want getters and setters for well i don't need image i just wrote that uh, image view is not going to have getters and setters i don't want people playing around with the image view but the positions need uh, a method to get the position and a method to change the position and the velocity needs a method to get and set the velocity and for the height and the width i want people to be able to get the height and width but i don't want them to be able to change it so i would hit the drop down beside height and say i want to get height method but i don't want to set height right? notice the ones that i checked off it checked both of them well yes i do want to get and a set position I do want a get and a set velocity, but I don't want a set width. I only want to allow people to know what the width is. Right? Uh, now, looking at some of the other options here, the access modifier, I want all those methods to be public, so perfect. And I want to generate comments for those methods because every method should have a comment on it. Ooh, that reminds me, I should go back and write the comments for the constructor and the set image method. But now if I hit generate, notice I've got 10 of a possible 15 methods selected. If I hit generate, all those methods, all 10 of those methods just got written for me into my class with a little method comment that says what the method does. It doesn't have to be a long method comment, just a little explanation. All those methods written for me. Um, add to this sprite object i'd like to add a few more utility methods um, it would be nice if i could change both the x and the y of the uh, position and the velocity at the same time so i'm going to add another method here and that's going to be public uh, set position and it's going to take double x and double y two variables instead of just one and I'm going to set position X to be equal to the X you just told me and position Y to be equal to the Y that you just told me. This will allow me to move the sprite around in one line instead of two. It's just a nice little utility method um, that should be returning void. I should provide a comment. Move the sprite to a new location. I'm not even going to put a comment for what X and Y are. I think most people are going to understand if I ask for an X and a Y what that means. Okay, and I'd like another little uh, utility method like this for the velocity. So I'm going to say public void set velocity. If I spell that, X and double Y. And I'm going to save that as the velocity in the x direction and the velocity 
in the y direction. Another handy little utility method that goes along with the speed is not to change the velocity uh, to a set value, but to add something onto the velocity. It's actually accelerate the sprite. Um, I'm going to call that public void add some velocity in the x direction and the y direction. So this method adds on to the speed instead of setting the speed. And so I got to make it act a little bit different, right? I need the velocity in the x direction to add however much you told me. And so I'll do plus equals and plus equals in the x and y directions. Uh, now, anytime the, the sprite moves. So if I change the position by using set position uh, in both directions or set position in just one direction, there's the set position for Y and there's the set, po there's the set position for X and there's the set position for Y. Every time the sprite moves, I need to inform the underlying group that it has moved. Right, and I need to do that by for setting the x position, saying this dot set layout x, and give it the new position that it's laid out at. Otherwise, I've stored where the uh, sprite is located, but I haven't actually moved it on screen. Right, so if I move, change the x position, I need to set the layout x. If I change the y position, I need to change the layout y into the new y position. And if I do them both, down here in my utility method that does both, then I need to set both the layout x and the layout y, which I can do in one line by just saying this.relocate to the new uh, position x and the new position y. Velocity isn't something that I see on screen about the group, so I don't have to relocate if there's a change in velocity. I just need to relocate if any time the um, sprite itself changes its position. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. We still need the method that updates the sprite uh, based on how much time has gone by. And we need the methods that allow us to detect whether two sprites are in contact with each other. So first let's set up the update method. So the update method updates the position of the sprite based on the elapsed time in seconds. That's the method that I'm going to need to write. And the parameter for this method is going to be how much time has gone by. We often call that the elapsed time. So this is public void update. And I'm taking a double. Remember, it could be a quarter second for elapsed time. It should be spelled with the case. How do I calculate um, the distance that something moves in a particular amount of time at, to set up its new location? So the new location is going to be position X is going to be equal to the old location plus the speed of the object in the X direction times time times the elapsed time and similarly for y
going to be the old Y position plus the speed or the velocity in the Y direction times the elapsed time. And if I move the object, I need to relocate the group just so that it appears moved on the window. Okay, two last methods to go for my sprite class and that is what are the boundaries of this sprite and our two sprites overlapped with each other so number one what are the boundaries of this sprite i'm going to use a public rectangle 2d uh, so javafx includes a lot of geometry classes there's rectangle but rectangles aren't good at telling you whether or not two rectangles overlap each other um, they have a different set of geometry objects for that and rectangle 2d is the one that's really good at telling you whether or not uh, different rectangles overlap and since that's exactly what i need it for that's what i'm going to use uh, so this is going to be the get boundary method it'll tell me a rectangle that is around the edges of this sprite this is what i saved the length and the width of the um, size of this sprite specifically for this method is going to return a new rectangle 2d it's going to have its left side at position x its right uh, its top at position y and then it's going to be the width of the sprite and the height of the sprite so the rectangle will have the same width as the sprite and the rectangle will have the same height as the sprite. And so pretty simple, straightforward uh, boundary, pretty simplistic boundary. We, we could maybe do um, something more sophisticated if we were later on when we're trying to make our game more impressive. But for now, we'll start with the simple Java FX geometry import rectangle 2D and spell position Y correctly so that we make a new rectangle that is just around the edges of our sprite. Right, and then the last thing, how do we tell if they intersect with each other? So public, remember this is Boolean, the answer is a yes or no. Do I intersect with some other sprite? Some other sprite that you're going to provide and ask me about. What does this method do? Determines if the given sprite intersects with this sprite. And we got a parameter S, which is the other sprite to test. And this will return true if the two sprites are touching. false otherwise. Right now, how am I going to decide if these intersect? Well, this is the reason why I used rectangle 2D for the boundary in the first place. So all I really want to do is return the answer to this question. Does the rectangle for this sprite, which would be this sprite.getBoundary, intersect, which is a method of rectangle 2D, the boundary for the other sprite, which is the one you passed as an argument, so the sprite called S, and we'll get its boundary as well. Does this boundary of this sprite intersect with the boundary of the other sprite? If that's true, then the two sprites are touching. If it's false, then they're not. And that should just about do it. That will be all the methods that our sprite class needs in order to carry out the job of a sprite class.
in the next video, we'll use the sprite class to create the soccer ball and the soccer shoe and put them onto a window.